Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my Hexmap game development series. In parts 23 to 25 of this series, which you can look out for in the top right, we took control of the individual segments of our hexes. We managed to get our units walking smoothly on a path consisting of any arrangement of segments or waypoints, and adapted our pathfinding algorithm to be based on individual segments rather than entire hexes. Our units are now able to find all kinds of narrow paths through the terrain and its obstacles, as long as the allowable movement directions between segments are properly defined. Today we'll consider how to expand on our path validation system and we'll consider how to keep units from colliding with one another or other obstructions situated on the map. It's not enough to check for possible overlaps once when the path is set, since the map is dynamic and a path can become blocked before the unit completes it. Let's figure out how to manage this. Now that our units can zigzag across hexes by walking from segment to segment, units can easily bump into each other when crossing paths. We need a way to resolve these collisions. My first attempt at this involved having a unit wait for another unit to pass by if it occupied the segment that the first unit would like to move into. This sorted out a lot of the collisions, although units could still pass straight through each other when crossing over segments that are close to each other without actually ever sharing a segment. On the other hand, units could end up waiting for one another indefinitely when they found themselves in a position where they wanted to swap segments. So we have to instruct one of them to search for a new path in such cases. Usually that just means walking slightly further by taking a wider turn. However, this could lead to situations where a unit's new path is a long way around, while it could theoretically just have moved out of the way for a little while. That doesn't sound too difficult, but since you're in a completely dynamic situation, other units in the vicinity could now influence this attempt at moving out of the way, and this could lead to a whole chain reaction that would be quite difficult to manage. So I tried something different. I created a tight personal space around each unit, which other units will attempt to stay out of. Instead of units waiting for others to pass, every unit would now continue with his journey. However, Every unit also constantly determines whether he is too close to any other unit by checking whether their personal spaces overlap. If there is an overlap and the units are walking in the same general direction, the unit in front would go ahead normally, while the one behind would walk slightly slower until the personal space rule is honored again. When units are not traveling in the same general direction, the angle between one unit's forward direction and the other unit's position is used to determine whether a sidestep to the left or right is called for. For a brief period, the Bezier curve determining the path would then be slightly adjusted by the magnitude of the overlap in personal spaces, by letting the unit walk slightly to the one side. It also sends a signal to the other unit to step slightly to the other side until they've passed one another. This works quite well and smoothly for two units crossing paths, while only using up a little bit of extra space on the map. Some clipping with the surroundings could occur from time to time, but that should be forgivable. When we add some congestion in the form of more units, it becomes a bit more difficult for everybody to avoid running into everybody else, and some jittery movements are possible, but these are not expected to occur very often. If required later, we could always try and smooth it out a bit more. Now, we never expect to have hundreds of units on the map, but we should still try and reduce resource use when testing for all these possible collisions. One way is to not let every unit test for an overlap with the personal space of every other unit. You only need to check for units currently on the neighboring segments, since the other units would definitely be too far away to be a problem. To allow us to do this, we add an array of units in transit to each segment. In the dynamic continuous travel coroutine we considered in one of the most recent episodes, we add a unit to the list of units currently utilizing a specific segment whenever a unit enters that segment as part of its path. When it moves on to another segment, 
We remove it from the units in transit array of the previous segment and add it to that of the new segment. Any unit that wants to know which units are close enough to it to cause potential issues can now consider the arrays of units in transit of all its neighboring segments at that time. For the vast majority of the time, most units would be far enough away from each other, causing very little resource overhead to be used. So, in the honor personal space method that keeps units apart, we loop through all the current neighbors and check all the units in transit for collisions. Note that we also check for a unit that may be stationed on the segment at the time. We won't be trying to move a unit out of its own personal space, so we only test when the unit performing the testing isn't equal to the unit being tested. Calculating the overlap between the units, as well as the angle between them and the angle between their walking directions, is straightforward. Now, when these angles are such that the other unit is walking in roughly the same direction as the current unit, we set the stepping direction to the opposite of the current unit's forward direction. This reduces the forward movement by the magnitude of the overlap, effectively slowing the unit down a little bit. If the units are not walking in the same general direction, we check whether the obstacle is to the left or right, and set our stepping direction to either right or left. We also slow the distance parameter of the Bezier curve a little bit to prevent the sidestepping from happening too fast. Finally, if the other unit has not yet calculated a sidestep direction due to another unit, we send the order to sidestep in the opposite direction to him. All that remains is to now adjust the unit's position with the sidestep, and make sure its vertical position is adjusted according to the terrain of its new position. And this leads to a collision prevention system that ensures units are not waiting indefinitely and do not have to find potentially silly alternative paths in narrow choke points. The downside is some jittery movement when too many units converge, but that is forgivable since it would only happen very rarely. In the next video I will look at creating differently shaped maps, and how these maps can be combined with a turtle that it's supposed to be resting on, as well as the wider environment. What's interesting about this is that the map and the turtle is actually static in world space. While the less complex wider environment and camera is inversely moved and rotated to give the same visual effect of the map and turtle moving through the environment. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye.